So can you just talk him to Beck's <laughs> My pleasure. I would love to. <laughs> Shouldn't do that while we're live. Maybe. We're not live, it's filmed. Although you can't be trusted with. Yeah. Great. <laughs> might end up being in there. Most more than likely it will be. I have here. no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Neither does Beck. All right. Are we starting? Yeah, if you like. Okay, cool. Um, hey, YouTube. Today we uh, have the awesome Jules in the studio with us. And we have just finished filming a thing for Inspire about beauty dishes and all the different looks you can get with different beauty dishes. Is that a good way of putting it? If that's the way you're going to put it? I think that's, the, well, that's just how I put it. So I'm going to say that's what we did. Uh, if you want links to that, I'll put that down below. Links to Jules' stuff will be down below as well. And now we're going to show you. You're going to get savage, are you? Yeah, I'm going to get, I'm always savage. Like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, we are going to use this. Can't bend over too much. Uh-oh. No, don't bend over. We're, doing, we're going to use this we haven't played with before so this will be fun We're not sponsored um it's not a review it's just none of you not sponsored not getting paid no, not getting paid not review <laughs> not sponsored we don't do that not all of that stuff uh we just wanted to show you peter's first play with it and his first impression and see what it can do with our beautiful superstar and how it can make her look even better than she already does not possible okay exactly darling <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was waiting. <laughs> you were waiting for the Moira voice. The Moira voice. Sorry, it happens. Um, but I thought you were Alexis. Yeah. I'm both. I'm a combination of Alexis and Moira. People send us stuff and, yeah, we don't take money for it. We don't do it for money. People send us stuff to get our opinion. And anything we like, we just use. Anything we don't like, we normally just send back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, we don't want to keep it. Well, I don't want to sell it. This is not what we're about. We're too busy for that stuff. But this was sent to me, and I've got heaps of stuff in here, but I was a little bit interested in this. So this is sort of like a large reflector beauty dish thing. And because we've just finished doing a tutorial about beauty dishes and that style of lighting, we thought we would give this a try because I've never, ever tried this before. So I'm going to do it in all its different setups. It comes with speed rings to fit nearly all lights. So we've put on a pro photo speed ring onto this. I know it does a Bowens, and I think it does a Bron color, most likely it does, I don't, I'm guessing, but I'm certain it must do all the major brands. I'll leave a link to this below as well. You'll leave a link to it below. Will I? Yeah, I will. Yeah. I can do that. Um, and this was passed on to us by the wholesaler, and they just said, hey, give us a play, tell us what you think. So our first things was a little bit, coming out of the bag, it was a little bit hard to get it to go together, but once it's gone together, it was fine. It's just we mucked around a little bit getting it. it's nice and firm and tight. Um, I'm just going to drop this onto a pro photo and I'm just going to get it down flush down there somewhere. Cool. Yeah. So I'm just going to go through the different ways I would use it. Now the picture we have on screen at the moment, this was taken with a pro photo medium deep dish umbrella with a sock on it and you'll see the sort of size of the light that's on there. So we've left Julie in the same position. I'm just going to drop the light around. And all of this is, it's, this is actually just me playing. So for the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm just going to play with this light to see what it does, what I can do with it, if I like it, if I hate it, what m modifications to it I like or dislike. So I'm going to start off pointing the light pretty much straight into the model. And I've set up for what we were doing before a very similar distance. So we're looking at about that distance from the model and it's a little bit longer to the wall for the fall off. I'm just going to adjust that a little bit, get it a little bit squarer. That feels like it's straight in your face. Yeah. I'm not sure what I've got dialed in up there, 7.1. I'm shooting it. 100 ISO, cool. F8, 160th of a second. Bang, uh, it's gone overexposed a little bit, so I just need to pull that down a fraction. I think I can do that here. So I brought it down to 6.8, so I pulled about a third of a stop off it. Pretty face, but we've got no shiny bits. Um, so this is, we can see we've just got our overexposure warning just going off, and my exposure, overexposure warning 
is set at uh, 245. And how I know it's right is if I just grab a color card, that swatch should overexpose. And if that swatch overexposes, it means it's what would have happened if I had a light meter, and it has. This swatch has an overexpose. So this is identical to what I would have got if I'd used a light meter. But this is just so much quicker and easier to do because I actually see the picture and I can adjust two things at once while I'm shooting. So the first thing, we've got a sharp line under the chin. I don't hate it because we do this a lot in fashion. If I come in and look at her face, um, I should have, I don't know if I do, sharpening's turned on. Oh, that's what we did a thing. So I just turned my sharpening off. See the difference? That looks lovely. That looks over sharp. And it's only with the tiniest amount of sharpening. So I turned my sharpening off because I hate sharpening. It makes it look computer made. And most models hate sharpening, right? You don't want every pore of your skin sharpened, do you? No. Um, you'd rather us put Vaseline on this, the lens so it's kind of soft, wouldn't you? Yeah. Cool, beautiful. So I'm just taking a picture without the color card. And that's going to give me the shot and hopefully my sharpening is turned off now. So on the skin, it's doing a nice job. A lot of photographers I know might struggle with that. Fashion photographers wouldn't care about that. We could pull it off to a side a little bit, but that is still feeling a little bit like sunlight or small reflector, even though, see, we've only got a tiny reflection in the actual. So notice the size of the light to the size of the catch light. What we're actually getting, it's a little bit like a para, and this eye shows it even more. If I zoom in at 200, look at those tiny little dots around there. So we've got like a para, we've got a center light and then an outside light. So we're getting this light and then we're getting it hitting this edge. So we're getting sort of like a, an outer ring light onto her. So what I'm gonna do is change this up and put one of its diffusers on and this is where it turns it back more like a beauty dish. Um, so I'm just putting these bars. So one thing I already know that I'd like to do a change, I would like personally to be able to move this in and out. Um, but I can do this. So I like the idea that I can dish out or dish in. And I can't tell you why, it's just I like the option that I could. All right, so now we've got something more like a beauty dish except it's silver. To me, a beauty dish is white, not silver. It's still, to me, a reflector. That's cool. We're going to zoom out. I'm going to guess that that has pulled off about a third of a stop. One, two, two, three. So I'm just going to turn the power of the light up a little bit. Jump in, try and get a pretty face. That's better. And it's pulled off more than a third of a stop, but look how much prettier that looks. That's so much prettier. So let's just, I might just do it here. Bang one off. You now see me work normally, so I'm just gonna keep dialing and clicking. Don't even look at the model. I'm just waiting for, to get some overexposure showing off. Um, yeah, we're still not there yet. I'm normally coming up about a third of a stop at a time. That's looking close to going off. No. All right, it's just, I've got the smallest blue dot just in there, like it's tiny, which means I'm pretty much at the exposure I want, and I can prove that. Just by moving my EV slider, you're gonna see straight away my overexposure warning came off. Um, if I zoom in on the eyes, it was really interesting to see. That catch light is really interesting. So you can see, this is now like a small ring and then a bigger ring which is giving a really, really pretty light. That light under the, this is a gorgeous light. Sorry, I'm not just saying this is, Beck can back me up the first time we've used it, isn't it? Yeah. I have not used this before and actually like this a lot. I'm not a fan of big silver beauty dishes, but I am liking what I'm getting out of this. All right, let's, everything's dead flat. Let's just get super pretty picture out of model. Cool, cool, that's really pretty. That is such a nice light to work with. My only thing is, and it is, even if we look at, I know it's hard now because we've got a downlight on her,
but her chest is quite light compared to her face. And this is one of the reasons why I tend to use beauty dishes to try and fix that, because if I point the dish part of it at the area I don't want too bright, it won't be as bright. So I'm gonna try that and see if it works with this. And what I mean is I'm gonna point the light downwards. Do you reckon that's pointed towards your chest more now? Yeah. yeah. All right, so by this means I'm pulling the direct light off there, which hopefully makes it a little bit cool. Because I don't, that's not where I want eyes to go. And I don't think I saw any change whatsoever. No change whatsoever, and that's because it's silver. And it's not really working like a parabolic because it's too flat. So that didn't do anything different. So let's see if I go the extreme and tilt up. And let's try and use the bottom of the dish more towards her face and feather it off. Cool, that's really pretty. Oh, I think that worked. Definitely. So if you look carefully on this, you'll see that if I just try and, so that little dimple there, if I just look at red channels, so I won't look at the rest of it, 205, and we look at the brightest area of the chest is just near there, we're 234. So it's doing exactly what I don't want. I don't want people looking at this, I want them looking at this. If I come to this now, go to that dimple, we're 201, so it's less, we're 224. So it's come down more, but this does feel brighter than this. That definitely feels darker than this. So by turning it the way I've turned, I've definitely turned down here and turned up here. I'm gonna do it just a touch more. I know this is all technical stuff. I try not to be technical while I'm shooting. I try and be just dumb and not look at numbers, just use my eyes. But the reason I'm grabbing numbers is just to sort of back up what I'm seeing with my eyes. And let's see. Yeah, that's now feeling darker in there. Let's see where, if we're just below that, where 196, just below that, where 215. So it's definitely pulled that down. I still prefer this light better. So I'm going to drop it back to where I was there. And I do this a lot, and Beck sees me doing this a lot, where I'll move the light a little bit, and people will say, why did you do that? And it's if it's better or worse, not for any other reason. So I tend to go with what looks better is why I do something, not try and get into the technicals of it. Really happy with that. So gorgeous, pretty light, which means I don't have a lot of Photoshopping to do or anything. All right, so out of the box, I wasn't a fan of it. Dead flat, it was, I might as well just use a bare bulb. When I put that diffuser on it, it's definitely given me a really nice look. Let's see what happens if we put one of their other toys on it. And I think it's that one. So, that looks like it'll be quick and easy. I've put in this little diffuser, which I reckon it's only gonna have pulled off a little bit. So basically I'm gonna put in two tenths of a stop, because I reckon it wouldn't have changed the picture much. It could be wrong. Cool. And now I just want to see what difference that made. Oh, that made a massive difference. Let's pull the two tenths off. Minus one, minus two, snap. That's incredible. So look at the difference just by putting that little diffuser in there has made to the light. Massive difference. What that is, is now this light is going to pick up all of this silver area that wasn't showing before, that's going to come under and illuminate this, and now this is going to be the light. And this is where a lot of people mix up with soft boxes. They think about hot spots and that in soft boxes. There isn't. It just illuminates all the fabric. So now I know that where, and this is why I tether, I can cheat. I can pull back and say, right, I'm they are nearly a full stop darker. So, so I've taken eight tenths off it. Cool. 
pretty good guess. I might have done this before, I think. So it's now giving me exposure about, you can see there's a tiny little dot. It's just going off on the forehead. Commercially for me, I would still bring it, and I non-commercially, I'll do it too. I'm gonna to take it down another tenth, maybe two tenths. So I don't wanna have that risk if she leans in and out. And I will now just take a shot. Cool, pretty, pretty, cool. If I wait long enough, she'll give me a pretty face. If I wait too long, she'll give me a dumb smile. There it is. <laughs> you, you hate me, don't you? Now she'll deep breathe and then come out with a pretty face again. That's cool, cool, cool. That's really pretty, cool. The control you can have over a model. Anyway, um, so if we now go, that was without that diffuser, that's with the diffuser a little bit darker. So that might have been a better example there to there. I'm not seeing a massive difference. Catch light, I am seeing a big difference. See the area of the blue blue. Let's increase that even more. See that area there and then the dots. And when I go back to the one that we took, oops, her nose, she's gonna be impressed with me. See how that doesn't seem to be as intense. So it has changed the intensity of the center of the light, but really in the overall light, I'm not seeing a massive, oh, the background might be a fraction darker because there's more light in the center. Yeah, so we've darkened and slightly vignetted off the background a little bit. I think if I was using it, I'd still be using it without that diffuser on. I'd just be using it um, the, with the first shot I showed. All right. Next toy. So now they've got a full diffuser. So this is now going to turn it more like a softbox. Um, I might as well leave that in there. I think when it comes to this, it's not like a normal light because there's a big steel thing that's completely hidden the flash to start with. One thing that's a, an irk for me as softboxes is if I can't do it quickly, that means my assistant can never do it. So I want dumbed down stuff that I can do quickly, which means my assistant can do it without having to ask me for help. Would that be right? Yeah, but my hands aren't tied up with gimbals. I wasn't gonna ask you to do oh. it. No, I just meant in a general thing. Oh, yeah. If yeah, I struggle yeah. to do it, yeah, then I'm never going to. I be able know to do that it. my, and it's not just a Beck thing. Any assistant I have, I know is going to struggle to do it. And even with me doing it there, it's just a fraction tight. But we'll live with that. So this has now become like an octobox, um, and it's more the type of octobox I use, which is normally a light flashing back into an umbrella or back into a box and bouncing out. So there's no hot spot in the middle. This should have definitely pulled power off. Let's see how much power this pulled off. All right, so by me sliding this out, it's nearly a stop. Two thirds of a stop. One, two, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. It's looking pretty spot on. Yeah, tiniest little blue dot on her nose. Now what I want to do is do a check between what I like with this light. There's a difference, but yeah, good luck. See, this is why us photographers spend too much money on toys. There is a difference. The background's changed a little bit, but seriously, if you put one of these pictures in one room and one picture in another room, I would struggle to tell the difference. The so shadowing, the way the light's hitting the model the background is a little bit changing, but if we go into the catch light, this is definitely look a much bigger catch light. But I think because of the way this light works, those little dots is giving you that outside edge. Again, I would be happy to use this as a pretty light. I get some very pretty shots just using this as, it's, as it is, and also with a variation but there's more. <laughs> I feel like an infomercial. 
But this is serious. We are not selling this. We don't make any money out of this. This was given to us to play with. And so we thought it was fun to play with. This is going to be fun. Now, the one thing I did like, I can't remember what the price was because we're not selling this, so it doesn't matter. But I know this sort of thing on some of the soft boxes I have are going to cost me like 600 Australian dollars. And I think this whole thing is less than, I think it was about 400 Australian dollars or something. It was, yeah, so the whole system was cheaper than what it would cost me to throw a grid on one of mine. So I gather we do a join where that is and we're just going to run around this and let's see if this is assistant proof. It's pretty easy so far. I think the only thing you're really bad at is technical things to do with bottle openers. I was pretty bad at opening the creme caramel. <laughs> the creme caramel. <laughs> it was difficult. <laughs> I just remember you tried, never used a bottle opener because you'd only buy cask wine. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> yuck. That's disgusting. Johnny buys wine in cardboard boxes. No, I don't. It's only when I'm going to Because then she can just take it out of the cardboard box and then tuck it under her jumper and it's there on tap. No, it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. I have a little bit more class than that, if you can believe. Now, for anybody who doesn't understand how grid works, the, <coughs> the, sorry, the deeper that grid is, the more vignette that's going to make the line. The narrower that grid is, the more softer the vignette is. So the harsher the vignette is deeper. So if this was double or deep, the vignette would be even tighter. It normally by rule, pulls off about two stops off a light, minimal. I'm going to just shoot it as it is and we'll see how many stops is pulled off. But this should give us a much nicer background. No, it didn't pull two stops off, it's only pulled a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, how does that look compared to that? Hmm, funny about that. Again, I don't think I can see the difference. And it's not putting this light down, it's just putting down us buying all of this stuff for lighting and it doesn't make a big difference. It might make a difference if we're out wider. So if we're much wider shot, if I put a wider lens on, this could make a much bigger difference. But for a portrait shot, with her that different distance off the wall, it's really not making a significant difference to her or the background. So let's just finish off and let's see what happens if we do bring this back to a nice tight portrait shot. The only thing with this now is as I come in closer, the actual angle of the light is going higher. So I need to point this down to her more, which is definitely gonna pull some light off the back wall. So I'm just sort of lining up the light through to her face, I think about there. I reckon I've added maybe a full stop of light and I'm gonna come in just a little bit tighter so I don't get any of that in shot. That's really pretty, that's pretty. Right, so now it's starting to do its job. So you can see how we now can get this beautiful vignetting on a wall. And this is the type of stuff I love doing. So it's darkened down the catch light. It has changed the light on her face a lot. Let's up. So I've come a third of a stop up. Yeah, a third of a stop was too much. Right, it's just over. It's a little bit down lighty. So let's, I'm gonna tilt it. I'm just going to do what I would normally do when I'm playing with lights. I'm going to see what happens when I tilt this light right down and refocus. Cool, beautiful. Well, that's getting a bit pretty. I, me personally, I love this stuff. When we get this gradient on a wall, I'm still not 100% happy with the way the light's hitting her face compared to before I brought it in close there. I think I like that better because if you look, the forehead's a little bit brighter, but the rest of the face seems the same way. To me, the bottom half of the face is feeling much darker. All right, so what would I do to make this better? All right, so the grid's causing that problem. So as much as grids are very expensive and they're cool in a large studio, I don't need them. 
it hinders my direction of light. I'm going to tilt this light down further because now I can use the whole box. When the grid's on the box, I can't use the whole box. I can only use what's in line with the grid. Now I can use the whole box coming in this way. Um, I think the power's come up a little bit. So I'm just going to go down to two tenths, that is. I'm just going to come in and pretty beautiful. That grid did a lot more than I thought it was doing. So it's just going off. I don't want it just to go off to her face is not feeling super dark at the bottom compared to the top. I should have marked my picture from before. That was it. Let's just mark that. So that has a little bit more light on the face. I might be a fraction too dark on there now. Plus, plus. That's better. So I'm comparing that picture with that picture. And I'm like on my second picture, lots more. Look at the background, so much more. I have a little bit of a gradient running from top. Not only a slight gradient, but she's popping off that wall for my likes better. And when I do my stuff to it, it's gonna pop even more. Let's try and get an even better shot. So at the moment we're dead straight with her. I'm gonna pull off center. And this should create, I don't think it's far enough off center to create a Rembrandt. I might just roll it in a little bit. Maybe about there, it's just a guesstimate. I could have just pulled my camera off center, but I wanted to set up. Cool, that's really pretty. Oh, that's getting nice. So I'm liking how we're getting this fall off. It's not the nicest of expressions. So I'm just, I've changed the tilt a little bit. I've turned it back a little bit. This is just me fine tuning. Uh, and I can't teach you about what I'm doing. This is just my experience doing what I'm doing. So I'm gonna turn the light down a little bit by turning it down, like t rotating it down a little bit so less power is hitting the model, which is gonna take my background a little bit darker. Cool, that's really pretty. Oh, I like that. Just a really subtle fall off across the face. All right, so now my job is to take a proper shot. Pressure's on. All right, so let's get... Two things I do when I want to get a, a proper shot is the first thing what I want to do is get the model... get a face on the model so it's a picture that I might use. So then I'm going to go there and then do some adjustments to the raw to make it mine. I'm now cropping in camera to how much I want in shot. That's really pretty. Beautiful. Cool, that's lovely eyes. Just your Kate eyes, they're gorgeous. It's, it makes it a little bit easy when you've worked with a photographer, isn't it? So it does make it... I know what I can get out of her and I quite like question mark, nearly, but there, there's no question mark. I, I like the finish of that. A little bit of dirt on the sensor, but I'll fix that later. If I was on a commercial shoot, I would clean my sensor right now. And even if I was on a private shoot, if I saw that, I would clean my sensor, but I'm not going to worry quickly for this, even though I should. Um, quickly, I'm going to do my black and white. I love my green channel, but let's see, default. Default's not much difference to green because it's predominantly green. Red channel's going to give me more contrast. It's going, if she had bad skin, it's going to fix up her skin. But I don't like this washed out look. It's not my look. I like more. See how that's added? Like it's given me a little bit more work in Photoshop to do, but it's added more shape to her face. And if I turn her Beyonce, yeah, nah. Nah, that, blue channel does not work on her at all. It works quite, it works quite well normally on people of, uh, I find, like um, Italians and Greeks. Uh, I get a really good look off their skin using a bit of blue. Now I've got that to where I want. I can adjust my saturation to see how the lips are getting lighter and darker. But I actually like it where it is. I'm liking everything. I wouldn't mind the background falling off a little bit more to pop her up a little bit. So I'm just going to put a curve just in the highlights. That's And this is one thing I love about Hasselblad is because, see, you can't break the curve. It won't break. So I can get beautiful one-point curves wherever I go. 
Um, no other program allows me this ability to do a one point curve and get really close to where I want to get. And then I can always add another curve in there to add to it. But with that one point curve, it just gives me that beautiful ease of that softness. Um, I've just put a slightly up curve in the shadows. So I didn't want the shadows to go quite as dark. But what I could do is just not have that in and bring some shadow fill in to do the same thing. Now what the shadow fill does, it's why I shoot with Hasselblad, why I use focus. I love that medium large format halo when you over process contrast in dark room with dodging and burning and things like that. Watch what happens just with the shadow fill. Look at this halo come in. I adore that halo. It adds this gorgeous interest in the background. And if you look at a lot of large format shots, especially the older ones, you will see this halo. And I really like the fact that I can do this. On, if you are using Hasselblad, you have to be in V1. If you are in V2 or V3, it does not work. You have to be in V1, which is the original version. Same with clarity. In, the clarity is not going to break the picture. If I zoom in on her eye, watch what happens. Clarity in V1 does not sharpen. See, no sharpening. All it does is localize contrast. So that's why I like the Hasselblad system. I can now add a little bit of localized contrast and punch that up lovely. And I'm just gonna fine tune this a little bit, maybe bring in a little bit of that. There's my finished look for my client. Quite often I've got my client standing next to me saying, yeah, I like or nah, hate, what's this stupid crap you're doing? Um, vignette. Yeah, I'm going to pull a little bit of that vignetting. So I actually want that older portrait look. And now come in and get our superstar to kill it. The pressure's on her big time. Cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Cool, 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 cool. That's better. Cool. Just eyes, nothing but eyes. Beautiful. Drop the chin now. Confidence eye to eye with somebody straight in. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. That's pretty. Do you like that? Nice. I've got your approval? Yeah. Cool, I think we've got it. If the client's happy. Lighting's awesome. Yeah, but it's just very little Photoshop I've got to do on that. Mm. And that's what I like about this, is a tiny bit of Photoshopping to be done to finish this picture off. Mm. Agree? Yeah, agreed. It's amazing. Look at the difference on your faces and those tiny little changes. It's such a big difference, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's only a second difference in between each picture. Mm. But just by talking about your mythical red boots. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing fancy about the red boots. She's just borrowing a pair of red boots from a studio. But it still worked to get a look, didn't it? Yeah. It's like, Peter, what are you saying? <laughs> Isn't it? It is. <laughs> but that's why there's a yin and yang in that picture that I like. Anyway, um, Beck hates it if I talk too much. I let, better let Beck do the talkings. Wow, I look so impressed right now. You do look so impressed. Oh, I don't have a wine. It's not that. It's that it's like 30 degrees and it's like I haven't had lunch and it's really late. So I'm getting the hangers coming out. The ha oh, we got hangries. Yes. We got, starving. We got more, more hangries. It's, it's also because it's hot. And hot bit, and I'm hangry. Yeah. And, and now you have to drink white wine, not red no, wine. No, I prefer That's that when it's this hot. Hydrated. It's just more that I'm really hungry. So I will quickly... Well, the quicker you talk, the quicker you can eat. Gee, you're looking healthy. <laughs> Look at that face I'm not change. doing that. <laughs> um, I will try and get rid of hanger. Hanger management. There we go. Okay, I'll be happy. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this and enjoyed watching Peter playing with this light for the first time. As you can see, it does actually give like a beautiful light. Um, we'll put a link in below. Link I don't, I can't remember what company makes it, but we'll put I think it was called Savage. Savage, all right. I don't know if that's the that's company cool. name. But, but the whole um, thing wasn't so much about, it was just people saying stuff. Some, yeah, and if you want like a full in-depth version of that, there is the Beauty Dish tutorial on Inspire, which goes through um, more about different things. That was, <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have workshops coming up for Melbourne. So we're doing um, natural light. If you want to learn about the joys of natural light, because clearly I love using it with um, 
filming when the clouds go in and out, but no, seriously, um, we do have natural light workshop, flash at night, studio techniques, and our portfolio builder, or you can book them all as a package. Links will be that down below. Uh, payment plan's also available for that. I'll stop being such a plug sales on them. Oh yeah. <sighs> I can't help it, I have to oh. do my little plug. plug. And do you more. Inspires down there. I think that's all. These type of tutorials will be coming back a lot more now that we are finally out of lockdown in Melbourne. So um, I'm about to go on Christmas holidays, but I promise when I get back, we'll be doing. But we had a massive backlog of commercial work we had to do as soon as yeah, we were Yeah, we got to like super, super swamped. We, uh, we we got out of lockdown and we thought like, oh, we can like do all these like fun things. And our clients were just like, we need you. So getting a little bit busy. Um, we will, I promise, we will keep up with more videos and stuff. I think that's all. I need some lunch. <laughs> we'll just sign off. Okay. Bye, guys. I just turned all the other cameras off. She's back. <laughs> <laughs>